This lunar eclipse in Taurus is officially the end of an almost two year ongoing saga of the Taurus Scorpio eclipses, which have brought with them disruption, upheaval, and evolution. Our lives probably look very different than they did back in 2021 when this whole thing began. The final eclipse in Taurus represents a culmination point where the insatiable need for change we've experienced in an otherwise comfortable and stable area of our lives finally brings the results we've been working so hard for. We can finally see the light at the end of the tunnel as the full moon eclipse not only illuminates the new faded path that we've moved into, but it also illuminates the true reason behind all of the upheaval, turbulence, tough choices, and change. Not only do we finally get clarity on where we're going, but we now feel more in control of our circumstances. We no longer feel like we're simply being dragged along for the ride. That being said, this eclipse brings us to a final decision we need to make and a final action we need to take in order to fully move on and embrace our new karmic path. In this forecast, I'll be covering the astrology for the next two weeks for the entire waning phase of the lunar cycle from October 28th through November 12th, which takes us through the remainder of our autumn eclipse season. But before we get into that, I want to remind all of you how to make the best possible use of the free astrology insight I'm providing for you today. And in case you're new to my channel or need a refresher, my name is Heather Eland with astrologywithheather.com. I'm a professional astrologer and I teach astrology. I release new astrology forecasts and tutorials here on my channel every single Saturday at 9 a.m. Mountain Daylight Time, so make sure you hit that subscribe button so you never miss an important astrology update. And just so you know the way that I structure my videos and you can know what's coming, you can navigate this video and you can use it to the best possible way. Um, the way I structure my forecast is I always begin with a 10 to 15 minute general overview of the energy for the next two weeks. Please don't skip this because this part of the video provides an important context for what we're going to be covering in the forecast for your sign. Speaking of which, when we do get into the forecast for all 12 signs, make sure you listen to your sun sign, your moon sign, and your rising sign to get a more holistic overview for the energy for the next two weeks ahead. Your rising sign will be the most predominant energy, your sun sign will be secondary, and your moon sign is important to listen to as well, although this, although this energy is more internalized and subjective. Finally, at the end of each video, I do a two to three minute overview of our forecast that we're going to be covering next time. In this case, it's actually going to be the Mars-Uranus opposition, which will be activated by the new moon in Scorpio. This is a very unpredictable, wild, intense Hence energy. And so you're going to want to stick around until the end and not miss that. <laughs> and so kind of getting into or back into the eclipse in Taurus, the nitty gritty, the general overview of what we're going to be covering here today. As I mentioned at the start of this video, this is the final eclipse in Taurus. This eclipse marks the ending of an extended period of dramatic change that began with the very first lunar eclipse in Taurus, which happened on November 19th of 2021. This one happened with the North Node still in Gemini. So this was kind of like a preview eclipse. It was a, a sign of what was to come over the next two years while we had Taurus, actually the next 18 months while we had Taurus, um, or the North Node transiting Taurus and the South Node transiting the sign of Scorpio. Since then, uh, earlier this year, we had the nodes shift signs this summer. And so now now we have the North Node in Aries and the South Node actually in the sign of Libra. However, this eclipse is happening in the sign of Taurus, and this is the very, very last one. And so this is basically the end of this really dramatic period of upheaval, upheaval, disruption, and change in the Taurus Scorpio area of our lives. Taurus and Scorpio are fixed signs. These are energies that represent areas of our lives where we thought things were pretty stable, where we thought things were just going to continue on in this sort of habitual, comfortable way, both psychologically in the sign of Scorpio and very literally physically and material in the, materially in the sign of uh, Taurus, but they haven't, right? And so between the eclipses in the fixed signs, Uranus in Taurus, and the ongoing Saturn-Uranus square that lasted through 20, from 2021 through 2023, really, the areas of our lives we once thought to be stable, comfortable, and secure have long since been disrupted and destabilized. There's something that we've completely missed the boat on, though. Um, during the last Taurus Scorpio eclipses, the last Taurus Scorpio eclipses, 
that's going to be highlighted this time around. So we've been having these eclipses for a couple of years now, and we've been learning the lessons. There's been this ongoing story of growth and development and change and things that we've been moving through and moving into and moving past in these areas of our lives. There's been a lot of disruption here. Um, however, we're not done just yet. This eclipse is the last chance. If we have missed the mark on something, it will show up. It will be illuminated. It will be highlighted. And we will need to take hold of the faded opportunities that we're being guided toward because our soul needs us to move into these things. There's no other option at this point. We're going to feel insatiable in our urge to jump right in and do the thing. Um, because this is a partial lunar eclipse, it's a bit on the weaker side as far as eclipses go, but because this is a special eclipse and the final one in a very long series in Taurus and Scorpio, it's still going to pack a punch, um, especially when it comes to wrapping things up, moving on, and reaping the benefits of all of the big moves we made in the Taurus area of our lives. So we're going to see a lot of the um, kind of reap what we've sown energy. It's like we made these choices. Choice, these choices because they're eclipse choices, right? Whenever it's an eclipse energy, especially a North Node eclipse energy, we feel like we're making choices, but in the back of our heads, it's like we're so compelled to do it that we we know that something is making us do, you know, it's not like we're, we're choosing in the same way that we do under other circumstances that are not eclipsy. It's like you feel this incredible, compelling urgency that you need to do this thing or say this thing or make this choice or move on from this thing. And even though you're technically choosing to do it and you're the one taking action with that North Node Eclipse energy, you know in the back of your brain that you couldn't have stopped yourself if you tried. Um, and that's that energy, right? And so we've been making all of these changes. Um, however, there's something here that is being illuminated that, again, we still need to finalize. We still need to do that last thing. We need to make that last decision. We need to speak our peace in a certain area. There's something that still needs to happen here. Otherwise, this eclipse wouldn't be occurring in our lives. <laughs> But um, this is going to show us a lot of the results. So it is going to be a results-oriented eclipse in addition to a wrapping up. It's kind of like, look at everything that's come from all of the changes and choices and, you know, things that you've done. And, um, you know, last chance to make adjustments because we are moving on to something different. That's also that energy of this eclipse spanning the gap between Taurus and Aries. Because as I mentioned before, the North Node is already in the sign of Aries. The North Node has moved on. This eclipse has not. <laughs> and so it's kind of like dragging behind because there's something we forgot. And so it's about looking ahead to the future and looking at what we're moving into and what we still need to wrap up, what, wrap up, what we still need to finalize in order to actually do that. Um, and so because this eclipse is not happening fully in the sign of Taurus and because the North Node has already moved into the sign of Aries, it does weaken the eclipse's impact slightly. It is a partial lunar eclipse. These are weaker as far as eclipses go. So we're going to be feeling this just a few days before, a few days after, but it doesn't mean it's not powerful. Um, there's something here that we really, really need to pay attention to. Um, and also, because this is kind of like an eclipse of looking to the future, as well as looking to the past and wrapping things up with that North Node already having moved on, um, it's about kind of looking at the opportunities, the potentials that lie ahead, and understanding the new path that we're being guided into, that we need to move into, and how our past connects to that, and our past choices, our past changes, the things that have gone on the past couple of years, how that has prepared us for this new journey that we're about to be taking with the North Node in the sign of Aries and all of the eclipses that lie ahead that we've already started to embark on, maybe a little prematurely because again, we haven't wrapped all the things up in Taurus. And speaking of kind of like where we're headed, this full moon eclipse is conjunct retrograde Jupiter. Jupiter makes this a very optimistic energy where we're very easily able to see the positive potential of what's coming up. So it's not... Um, yeah, it's not only about the past. It's kind of like connecting the past to our future potential. And, you know, when 
An eclipse conjunct Jupiter can always bring faded, unexpected opportunities our way, and that can absolutely be part of the case and part of what's coming up here. It's kind of like an opportunity arises, and that opportunity maybe arises because you're harvesting what you've already sown from all of these past eclipse cycles, and this is going to kind of lead you into the future. However, with Jupiter being in retrograde, it's more likely that we're going to have opportunities for internal growth and for knowledge and experience and wisdom and those types of things versus external material expansion. I'm not saying that that can't happen, but it's kind of like, look at all of the, these experiences that lie ahead. Look at how we can grow. Look at how we can change. Look how we can develop ourselves um, internally as well as externally as a result of everything that we've kind of changed. And especially if you've gone through the ringer and you have a lot of fixed energy and this has been a really difficult two years for you it's kind of like where you get to see like okay this all sucked but <laughs> there is a light at the end of the tunnel if this that and the other thing hadn't happened I wouldn't be able to have these new opportunities that are coming up for me that I can clearly see right now. So um, it is kind of that energy as well. It's like this internal shift of perspective that we're all going to be going through as a result of this eclipse. Kind of on the flip side of this though, um, the full moon eclipse also opposes this Mercury-Mars conjunction that's happening in Scorpio. Mercury and Mars, when they're together, bring with them the potential for conflict, arguments, disagreements, hasty words, rash decisions. People are going to be seeing things really clearly. Like everyone's bullshit detectors are like on high alert right now with this Mercury-Mars energy in the sign of Scorpio. Um, and people are going to be calling things out and they're going to be calling it like they see it. And that can cause conflict, right? That can cause disputes. That can cause people to change their minds about something or to go back on something that they had already agreed to because they realize, hey, this is not what I thought it was. And that can be a really good thing. Um, and especially because Mars is in the sign of Scorpio and Scorpio is, you know, ruled by Mars. I think that this is overall not going to be the worst possible energy. However, um, with Jupiter in the mix, because this is a major activation of the Jupiter Mars opposition, which is also exact on the eclipse, this is an energy that can cause people to seriously overreact and over respond to really anything and everything that's thrown our way. So with Mercury in the mix, our thoughts and worries are likely to be the things that are disproportionate to the situation at hand. And we might kind of overstep with what we say and what we interject into the situation. Um, but, you know, it's... <laughs> Again, I don't see this as being the worst possible thing. I think that this is an energy where people are going to be taking things too far. People are going to be overdoing things because that is the energy of Jupiter with Mars. It's like overdoing it, overreacting, overresponding, um, you know, taking things to excess, doing things to excess, um, overstating something, which may be what I, is what I'm doing right here. <laughs> um, and so we, we do kind of want to be aware of that. And we might have an intensity to kind of like overthink and overcorrect, um, you know, mistakes or different things like that. So that could be an issue too. So people are going to be kind of having to think and act really quickly, but I think it's going to be to our benefit for the most part. And I think if you do overdo it, you know, just allow some time and space for that because that's very likely, especially if you have a lot of fixed sign energy, if you have a lot of Taurus or Scorpio um, or even, you know, Aquarius or, um, or Leo, sorry, <laughs> you might, you, you're going to be more prone to overdoing it for sure. And you might burn yourself out a little bit, but it's for a reason. It's kind of like, you know, a means to an end. Um, luckily the eclipses though are going to be making a supportive sextile to Saturn, which slows us down and grounds out the energy just a little bit. Um, it helps us to seriously consider the long-term consequences of our words and our actions. Although the North node, because it's a North node eclipse, we, again, we often feel that even though we're technically driving the ship, we're so intensely compelled to say and do things that, um, we somehow don't have a choice in the matter like we do but we don't so 
yes, it's going to help us to think things through. Yes, it's going to help us to ground a little bit when things are just going to be moving very, very fast with this Mars opposition to Jupiter. It's like this is a short eclipse window. This is a short eclipse energy. It's the last chance to do the thing and make it happen and wrap it up. And it's going to happen very, very quick. It's going to become, we're going to become aware of it very quickly. We're going to act on it very quickly. It's going to be done very quickly. That's going to be a big part of this energy. But Saturn's going to make sure that we think about the long-term consequences and that we're doing things the right way, even if we're doing them quickly. And so overall, I actually really like this eclipse. Um, as far as the last eclipse in Taurus goes, this one's pretty nice. For most people, it depends on how it impacts you, which of course we'll get into in the forecast for all 12 signs. But before we do, for those of you who are interested in learning more about your own chart, I have a free gift for you. Um, the astrological houses, as you are probably well aware, are a topic that's been distorted by more misinformation and controversy than probably any other topic in astrology. This has made it very difficult for new astrologers like you <laughs> to truly understand the meaning behind the 12 houses and even more difficult to piece the information together coherently to create accurate interpretations and give meaningful astrology readings. Well, I would like to change that, which is why I'm unlocking our entire module on the 12 houses from the Cosmic Academy of Astrology for free for you for 10 days. The link to sign up is down in the description in below this video. <laughs> um, this free module on the houses is not only a free lesson where you're going to get a lot of really juicy, good information along with quizzes and um, supplemental bonus videos and all sorts of stuff, but it also serves as a preview of the Cosmic Academy of Astrology. So if you've been interested or thinking about, you know, enrolling or wanting to really Really deep in your astrology education, you'll get to see what we're all about. Um, and so you're going to have an opportunity to sneak, to sneak a peek inside of my most popular and comprehensive astrology course. This is the place for astrologers just like you who are tired of sifting through piles of disconnected and disorganized information from YouTube and books, only to be left frustrated and confused when you try to piecemeal it together to give a reading. In the academy, we offer a structured step-by-step -step approach to learning astrology that logically layers the information. And the best part is you won't be doing it alone. In addition to over 120 hours of pre-recorded lessons covering everything you need to know to read natal charts and make complex predictions with confidence, the Academy includes live study group sessions that are smaller and more intimate, Q&A calls twice a month, and an active and engaging student community where you get to ask your questions and get answers from expert astrologers, myself included, and you can connect with like-minded astrology lovers just like you so you can learn, practice, and grow together. Even if you're not ready to join us in the Academy, me, you can still unlock the 10 day access to our module on the astrological houses and benefit from all of the information and resources we've provided for you free of charge. My gift to you again, the link is down in the description below. Okay. So without further ado, let's get into the forecast for all 12 signs. All right, and so for Aries and for Aries rising, this eclipse is bringing you to a culmination point of a lot of massive change, massive growth, massive rearranging that's been going on in the area of your finances. You've probably been put through the ringer a little bit here. However, this is showing you the light at the end of the tunnel. This is showing you what this has all been for, what this has all been about, and what this is all leading to. This is going to potentially also bring up a final opportunity to make the changes that you need to make in the financial area of your life so you can have greater financial security and stability moving forward. This is also a great energy for those of you who want an opportunity to do something um, to create financial independence or to move on or move past things like debt or, um, you know, any form of dependence on somebody else for finances or for, you know, funding in some way. So I really love this energy for that. Um, there could be some words exchanged <laughs> or there could be like a message that comes very quickly and very unexpectedly, um, you know, from a collections agency, from like a tax person, an IRS agent, um, or from a spouse or significant other that you have to act on very quickly. It could actually be an opportunity to clear away some debt or to, you know, even gain more resources through your partnership or through some joint financial venture or through some sort of um, investment of some kind. So it's not necessarily a bad thing, especially with this eclipse energy, but it is something that's going to come very quickly. It's going to be very powerful and you're going to have to act right away. Um, 
But overall, this is about taking stock of what you've been going through financially over the last two years, what you still need to do to solidify the changes or to move in the direction that you want to move into after all of the, dis the disruption, after all of the change. There we go. <laughs> for Taurus and for Taurus rising. <laughs> So for Taurus, this energy is happening in your sign. You are the, you're the one that's been going through all the changes. You yourself have changed. Um, this has probably been a time where everything about who you are, the way you show up in the world, what you're doing, what you're all about has been going through major upheaval, major change. There could have been health issues and relationship issues that have come up for you over the past couple of years. This is your time to reflect on that. This is where all of this is going to be illuminated and you're going to be able to see much more easily what the heck all of that was about and what you're all about nowadays. Um, this is a really beautiful energy where a faded karmic opportunity could come your way to you very personally for you to do something that's more in alignment with who you are now versus who you were back then. This is the final chance for you to put yourself out there and do the thing that you want to do in the way that you want to do it before you kind of turn more inward and the changes going on are going to be um, in, in different areas that are more internal and also more mundane. So right now you're still front and center. And this could also be like you getting recognized or rewarded for something. Thing that is a result of one of those eclipse upheavals or um, eclipse changes that you made in any area of your life, because really this is your whole life that was changing over the past couple of years. It's kind of like this is, you're seeing the results of that and a new opportunity is coming your way and that's being highlighted and illuminated for you at the time of this eclipse, which I love. Words could be exchanged between you and a spouse, significant other, close friend, family member, somebody that you're very close to in a one-on-one -on -one situation. Um, but the message that comes up isn't necessarily negative. It could be. There could be some sort of... Um, a dispute or some sort of like argument or something that's said sort of in haste that maybe comes off the wrong way. However, um, this could also be a message or an idea or some sort of communication that comes through somebody else that is what leads to this opportunity, is what allows you to really see what the final changes that you need to make in order to move forward. Uh, for Gemini and for Gemini rising, this eclipse is happening in your 12th house, which is the house of endings. And this is truly about endings for you, Gemini. So this has been a period of a lot of change and upheaval over the last couple of years involving your inner world, your inner reality. Um, this has been a lot of subconscious change. This has been a lot of really karmic, otherworldly, bizarre energy connected to potentially past or future lives, connected to things that are beyond your conscious awareness. You've probably also been going through a lot of changes physically with your day-to-day -day habits and routines, with your work, with your health even. Um, this is the final energy where you're just taking a bird's eye view and all of the change, all of the things that you've gone through, everything that you've experienced in the last couple of years in these areas of your life are being illuminated. And this is where you're going to get an opportunity that comes to you as a result of all of the major changes and upheavals, all of the turbulence, all of the weirdness in these areas of your life. Um, there could be like a weird, like there could be an intense message that comes to you through coworkers, or there could be something intense, like a situation that comes up really abruptly when it comes to your work or your day-to-day -day habits or routines, or even like a message or an email or a voicemail or something that pertains to your health um, that you might want to like overreact or over respond to, or just delete it all together. Um, don't act too hastily because there's there's an opportunity in this message. There's an opportunity in this thing that's coming up for you. Um, there is something that you need to take action on here. So um, basically, <laughs> for Geminis, uh, this is the final chance for you to let go. Whatever it is that you want to purge, whatever it is that you want to move on from, whatever it is that you truly want to end in most areas of your life, this is the time where you have the green light to do it. 
Um, this is also going to be an eclipse where you're going to probably be not sleeping so well. <laughs> it's a full moon in your 12th house. You're going to have um, very vivid, very important messages coming through your dreams. And this can also just make it so your brain and your emotions and your like psyche is super alert in the middle of the night. So that's something to just kind of be aware of as well, especially if you're not eating the right things, especially if you're not moving and exercising during the day, because that's going to be really important for you to do as well. Um, this could also be something that comes up for you that's an opportunity to heal physically very literally um, and so you want to pay attention to that and take advantage of that opportunity because it's not going to come back around for another like 18 years really when this cycle comes back around maybe nine years at the earliest when we have the node reversal for cancer and for cancer rising so for cancer, this full moon eclipse is happening in your 11th house, which is the house of friendship. It's the house of group associations. It's the house of people that you surround yourself with by choice. You've probably had a lot of faded encounters, a lot of new connections and friendships and new networks that you've been associating yourself with and connecting to over the past couple of years. You've probably had some new friendships that have come in or some new people that have entered into your life that feel super ultra important that have shown up in very synchronistic and strange ways. Um, this could be an energy that highlights that and shows you the why. Why are these people in your life? Who are they really to you? Um, this could also be an opportunity for you to become recognized within your social circle or social network or in a social group or a group, so see, or, or group situation in some way. And so that could actually be quite wonderful. Um, there's something here that you need to take action on involving your passions, the things that you love, and the people that you connect to to engage in those passions and the things that you love. And that can be a really beautiful, wonderful opportunity for you that's probably not going to come around for at least another nine years, if not 18. So you want to make sure that you are you know, doing what you need to do and making it happen very quickly. There's also a connection that maybe is going to come up for you or um, an illumination or a new development within a connection that's been made in the past couple of years that's going to be very important for your career development moving forward with the North Node in Aries. So pay attention to that and don't let that slip through your fingers. For Leo and for Leo Rising. So for Leo, this energy of the full moon lunar eclipse is happening in your 10th house, which is the house of career and public reputation. You've probably been going through a lot of changes personally, professionally, with your relationships, with your family, your home, your living situation. You've experienced all of it, Leo. <laughs> and this eclipse energy is no exception to that. It's going to highlight all of the big major developments, upheavals, changes, disruptions that you've been having, especially when it comes to your public reputation, what it is that you put out there into the world for public consumption. And especially for those of you who are working, this is going to highlight the faded new path that you have moved into when it comes to your career. There's something here that you need to pay attention to that's going to be a illuminated, maybe a last minute opportunity. This opportunity could be connected to something that you're going to be developing and growing into with the North Node in your ninth house. It could be even an opportunity to develop yourself through additional education. And that's going to be the last kind of piece to the puzzle with achieving what it is that you want to achieve out in the world, achieving your goals. Um, it could even be like a foreign connection that is tied to your work or somebody in a position of power and authority or a teacher that you look up to um, that comes your way, that contacts you, that recognizes you or that you recognize and connect with because with the North Node, it can feel like this is your choice and you're taking action. Whatever it is, this is going to lead to really important developments for you over the next like year and a half. So you really want to pay attention. Don't let family disputes hold you back from taking advantage of the opportunities or seeing the big picture when it comes to your career. That's the final thing I'll say. Um, and don't, over re don't overreact to whatever is going on behind the scenes with your home and family. Focus on what's going on externally. For Virgo and for Virgo rising. So for Virgo, this energy is happening in your ninth house, which is the house of perspective. It's the house of your beliefs about God, the universe, the world around you, your religious, ethical, and philosophical value systems, which have been undergoing 
really crazy upheavals and changes. Your beliefs about the world, your perspective on reality has shifted and altered so dramatically over the past couple of years that the way you view things is completely different. It has nothing to do with who you were before. Um, and this is going to highlight that. This is going to highlight how that change in perspective has shifted and altered your life as a whole, especially if you are a Virgo sun, moon, or rising. Anywhere, I would say from zero to 15 degrees because we have that energy of the eclipse. We have the energy of Jupiter trining your ascendant sun or moon. And so this is going to show you how this change in perspective is benefiting you personally and changing the way that you engage with your reality in all the different ways. Um, this could also be an opportunity that comes up for you involving travel, involving expanding your worldview and attaining that inner growth with that Jupiter retrograde through a travel opportunity or through one final chance to go to the place that you've been wanting to go to or that you've been visiting over and over again. This could also be something coming up for you, an opportunity involving education or a culmination point involving a higher educational pursuit that you've been kind of in the middle of or in the mix with over the past couple of years. Um, there could be something that comes up really quickly, like a message or an invite involving travel, involving higher education, involving connections with people in foreign countries, um, involving maybe even like a short distance travel or a vehicle or something along those lines. If that's the case, take advantage because this is not going to come back around for at least another nine years, if not 18 years. So you want to make sure that you're doing what you need to do. And whatever it is that you're doing education-wise, experience-wise, your shift in perspective, aligning yourself with your integrity, all of these things are going to benefit you financially moving forward. And that's going to become clear and apparent around the time of this eclipse. All right. And then for Libra and for Libra rising. So for Libra rising, this energy is happening in your eighth house. And so this is the house of joint finances, debt, taxes, inheritance, insurance, investments, other people's money, money that is held in joint accounts, all of those things. You've been put through the ringer and going through a lot of change and upheaval financially over the past couple of years. It's not necessarily a bad thing. Some of you might have experienced this through a lot of growth in your wealth and a lot of new financial opportunities that were bizarre, <laughs> but fruitful. And other others, depending on how this is showing up in your specific individual chart, and what else you have going on there might have experienced this as financial turbulence and upheaval, loss of income, disruption to your finances that was not necessarily as uh, welcome. Regardless of where you are on that spectrum, this eclipse illuminates the why and it it's bringing you the culminations. So you're finally seeing the big picture results of all of the different changes and adjustments and pivots that you've been making over the past couple of years financially. This is also an energy where some sort of message can come up very quickly. A financial opportunity can come up very quickly that you need to respond to in the moment. Um, and, you know, that could be a really beautiful, really wonderful thing. It could change your perspective on your finances, even if it doesn't bring immediate financial gain. It's kind of like this perception perspective shifting moment where you get this piece of information, you get this um, contact from somebody really important and you do something financially, you make a move and that changes and shifts your reality. It's kind of the last thing you need to do before you move on. Um, this is also an energy where there could be stuff coming up um, that you need to finalize involving insurance policies, insurance payouts, um, your will or, um, you know, living trust or whatever it is that you have. Um, this could be an energy that involves something around death. So maybe for the, some of you, I'm sure some of you who have Libra rising have experienced a death over the last couple of years. Um, and especially, I'm sure that there have been some of you who have experienced that tied to the eclipses. This is going to to highlight that in some way, I think it's going to highlight it, highlight it in a way that is healing more than anything else. Something's going to come up very abruptly that's going to kind of trigger that memory or trigger that energy and um, it's going to shift your perspective on the situation or it's going to provide an opportunity for healing in some way. So I do like that if that's, if that's something that you've experienced. Um, Overall, this is a really great healing energy. So especially on a psychological and emotional level, the eighth house is the house of your deep-seated fears and anxieties that are tied to trauma that you've experienced um, in your lifetime. And so this is 
a time where you're gonna get a different perspective on that experience and you might be able to find an opportunity to heal or find the right person, the right therapist, the right whoever that um, can help you and guide you through that process of resolving unresolved conflict, resolving unresolved trauma. So um, if that's something that you've been engaged with, especially over the past couple of years, that healing process, this is the time where it reaches this culmination point and you might actually experience a major breakthrough of some kind. And that can help you in your relationships also clearing up your finances will help you in your relationships moving forward. And that's going to become very apparent and highlighted at the time of this eclipse. All right. And then for Scorpio and for Scorpio rising. So for Scorpio, this eclipse is happening in your sign, but also, of course, in the opposite sign of Taurus. This is in your seventh house. There is something here that's reaching a culmination point that's being highlighted. There's been a lot of changes going on in your relationships or with your partner or significant other over the last couple of years. And this is where it really reaches this culmination point. And you can really see the big picture of where this was all leading to, why this was all happening, what opportunities are coming your way as a couple, what opportunities are coming to your partner, what opportunities are coming to your best friend, what opportunities are coming to whoever it is that you're close to that's been going through these changes, which it's probably more than one person. Um, this is a really beautiful opportunity to change or do something in partnership with somebody else for the last time. So wherever this has been focused, so if you have been going through changes in terms of, let's say, um, you know, you and your partner have been changing and shifting things together. Um, your partner has gone through a lot of changes. This is the final change. Something's going to come up really abruptly that they're going to have to take an opera. They're going to have to take advantage of. Um, and that's going to be really important for them moving forward. Or you guys are going to have to take an opportunity together as a couple, um, in order to move forward with something. This could also be an energy where if you've gone through, um, struggles with your partner or you've been separated or divorced, or broken up during this time. Um, this is where a new opportunity comes in. It's kind of like it shows you like, okay, that really sucked, but look, um, now this new relationship is possible. Now a healthy relationship is possible. There's something here where it shifts your perspective in some way and it, it's for the better. Um, and that's what's going on for Scorpio. For Sagittarius and Sagittarius rising, this energy is happening in your sixth house, which is the house of health, work, and daily routines. And so this could be the culmination of a lot of changes you've been making in those areas of your life. A lot of upheaval, a lot of disruption, a lot of craziness, a lot of weirdness <laughs> that's gone on when it comes to your work, when it comes to your health, when it comes to your day-to-day -day -day routines, which I'm sure have been very disrupted and very unstable over the last couple of years. It's kind of like this is really showing you why. This is also where you might get the results of all of the changes and the disruption and weirdness that's been going on. All of the synchronistic opportunities you've taken advantage of could provide you with another opportunity. And that could come in the form of, um, you know, a new job offer, a big project, you know, a big work-related project or contract that could come through for you. Um, that could be a breakthrough in your health. There's something going on behind the scenes though. There's a message that comes to you from somewhere hidden that this is a weird one there's someone acting on your behalf behind the scenes or acting against you behind the scenes in either case it's connected to this opportunity and i think it works to your benefit um, because of this <laughs> mars conjunction to mercury it could be that there is somebody who's talking about you and there's a sense of urgency like we need to get this person on board. We need to make this happen. Or it could be that there's somebody bad mouthing you and then the opportunity that you shouldn't have doesn't come to fruition as a result of that. Um, regardless, I feel like this is actually a good thing. You're not going to be able to see what's going on there, but you're going to know it happened after it happens. Um, regardless of what goes on here. So Especially if you have like a work-related opportunity that's a result of all the changes you've been making the next couple of years, that's going to benefit you in that fifth house area of passion and fun and play and maybe even entrepreneurship. Um, and so all of these things are beautiful and wonderful. If you are having a health breakthrough, especially if you are somebody who wants to, you know, get pregnant, get pregnant or have children in the future, this could actually benefit you in that way. It's kind of like this opportunity comes for healing to connect with the right practitioner 
practitioner, you have this health breakthrough, and later on in the next couple of years, that leads to, you know, greater fertility and the ability to, you know, have the family that you wanted to, to have or to get pregnant or whatever it is that you are hoping for in that area. And so, yeah, all of these things are possible for Sagittarius. For Capricorn and Capricorn rising. So for Capricorn, this energy is happening in your fifth house, which is a fun, beautiful, wonderful house to have an eclipse in. So this is the house of joy. It's the house of the things that you do because you love to do them. It's your hobbies, your passions. Um, you know, it's your pursuits that you do just for the sake of like creative self-expression and fun. And so you've probably been going through some changes in this area. You've, you've probably developed some new hobbies, some new interests, some new passions, and you're going to start to see the results of that and reap the benefits of that around the time of this eclipse. There's something new that you need to take an opportunity take a hold of like an opportunity to put yourself out there creatively or to pursue something that you're passionate about a little bit more seriously um, or to join in on like a class or a club or something that's tied in with the thing that you love that could be a part of it as well it could be a friend invites you to go to you know a dance class and you're like all right I'm gonna go do it um, and then that becomes like your thing moving forward or it could be your friend invites you to teach a dance class <laughs> and that becomes your thing moving forward. It is an entrepreneurial house as well. Um, this could also be if there have been changes going on involving your children, maybe you have given birth or had another child, or there's been changes with the dynamic, um, in the relationship with your children. This is a time where you're going to get a different perspective on what was going on there, especially if it was difficult for you. It's kind of like you, it's a breath of fresh air. It's kind of like, all right, I've been through this. I've done that. I've made all the changes, you know, things have been all over the place, but now I can see the why and how my relationship with my child may have benefited or could benefit in the future now that things have started to settle. So it's kind of like this opening up of perspective. Um, I would say that, you know, for the most part, this is going to be a really beautiful energy, but for people who have sun, moon, or rising anywhere from zero to 15 degrees in the sign of Capricorn, this is benefiting you in all the ways. This is an absolutely beautiful energy. You're going to have personal opportunities that can come to you um, in all areas of life to do the things that you want to do to pursue your passions in a bigger way and make that a part of who you are. Um, this is also a really beautiful energy for relationships, especially for passion and romance in relationships. So um, take advantage of that while it's here. This is the last chance to uh, take hold of those developments for the next, or these types of specific developments in the, that area for the next at least nine, if not 18 years. All right. And then for Aquarius and Aquarius rising. So for Aquarius, this is happening in your fourth house, fourth <laughs> which is the house of home, family, property, and real estate. And so this is where you've been having a lot of change going on in your career, um, in your public reputation, in the way that you impact the world, in your connection with people in positions of power and authority. You've been having a lot of change going on in the last couple of years when it comes to your living situation, maybe your family connection, your family dynamic, your roots in some way. You might have had a move or a move connected to a career change. Um, this could also be that you've been changing very personally your relationships have been changing. Anytime you have eclipses on the angles or in the angular houses, which the fourth house is one of those, your whole life basically is changing in these very fundamental ways. This is where you finally get to see that culmination. Why did this all happen? It's all starting to come together. Maybe you made a big move and it's like, at first it was really hard and it was kind of like going back and forth with it. Was this the right decision and having to like deal with this thing and that thing and the other thing. And finally you see it all coming together. You're like, yes, this is exactly what I needed. This is exactly maybe what we needed as a couple or what my family needed, um, what I needed for my career, whatever. Um, there is this energy here though of an opportunity that comes your way through your work that impacts your home life. Um, it's like a quick message or somebody says something or maybe it's a, somebody in a position of power and authority that like grants you access to something or gives approval for something and then that allows something to finally move through um, when it comes to your home or maybe a renovation or purchasing a home or something like that. Um, there's something there's something going on in that area potentially as well. Um, there could be an argument or a dispute involving your work, but I would say that, you know, whatever it is, it leads you to 
um, create more of what you need to create for yourself when it comes to your home and your property and your real estate. Um, getting your home life settled and getting your ducks in a row behind the scenes is going to create opportunity for you in the future when it comes to connecting with your community and developing a really strong sense of community within your neighborhood and an immediate environment. And so this is something to take advantage of. Finally, for Pisces and for Pisces rising. So for Pisces, this is happening in your third house. The third house is not a bad house. This is the house of day-to-day -day, um, kind of mundane communications and connections and interactions that you have with people in your immediate environment and your community. So this is the house of like going to the grocery store and, you know, chatting up, chatting with the, the cashier or somebody standing in line. This is the house of, you know, running into something, someone when you're walking in your neighborhood. This is the house of, you know, talking to your neighbor over the fence. Um, those types of day-to-day -day mundane communications right now take on a very big, very faded importance where a really incredible opportunity can come to you through a chance encounter literally right in your own backyard. And so don't take these situations lightly. Um, get out there, you know, get out into your neighborhood, go to the community event that's happening something really good can come of that right now, um, especially through like a very quick, brief connection, encounter, or message or communication where it's like fleeting, but it's very important. It's like that something is there. I need to follow that thread. I need to reconnect with that person. Um, this is a really great energy also involving potentially travel, especially short distance travel or vehicles, but in general, there could be travel opportunities that come your way, or there could be something that um, comes up as a result of a prior travel opportunity that's come up over the past couple of years. This is also an energy where there's like a culmination potentially for some of you involving education where maybe you've gone back to school, you've got a certificate in something, you took an online course of some kind and it's reaching this culmination point. Maybe you were in the Cosmic Academy of Astrology and you're finally getting your certificate of completion. Wow. <laughs> and that takes on a faded importance. Whatever it is that you were doing uh, that you were doing um, education wise and that's coming up for you now and that's culminating and this new opportunity that's arising for you as a result of what you've been working on the past couple of years, this has financial opportunity tied to it. And so you're starting to see that connection as a result of this eclipse spanning the third and second houses for you because the North Node is in the sign of Aries. And so all of these things, things are absolutely wonderful. Um, and yeah, that's my forecast for Pisces. Oop, how do I get myself back up here? There we go. Okay, so um, before we kind of sign off, I wanted to give you a quick overview of what we're going to be discussing in our next forecast, which is the Mars-Uranus opposition, which will be hugely activated by the new moon in Scorpio, which is happening on the 13th of November. And so in our next forecast, we're going to be digging into the main event of November, which is that super erratic, super inflammatory energy of Mars and Uranus, which are going to... Um, be in a very close conjunction with the new moon in Scorpio, but this also takes us out of the eclipse season on November 13th. So we're officially no longer in eclipse season once this energy occurs. But even though we're technically out of the faded eclipse zone, we're, we're probably going to be subject to even more sudden upheaval and change than we experienced really throughout most of the month of October. The start of October maybe being the exception because Mars was activating the eclipse points and that was wild. Um, but Mars always brings up things that come on very suddenly and very intensely, while Uranus is an unpredictable, shocking energy that takes us by surprise and changes our lives in ways that we never really would have expected. The combination of these energies can be explosive, and so we're going to be discussing this in detail in my next forecast for the 12 signs in two weeks, so make sure you subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on this very important astrology update. And thank you guys so much for watching this video. Comment below and let me know how you're doing this eclipse season. Share this with a friend if you feel like they could benefit from the information that I shared with you today. And I look forward to seeing you guys next week. Bye everyone.